it's finally that time again for another part of the newbie guide. So we've learned about build crafting, weapon crafting, how you can get different types of currencies and a lot more within the guide so far. But it's now time that you start tackling the end game content. And at the very start of this end game content is something called Nightfall. So if you go over to the Vanguard, you might have noticed this already. But there is something called a Nightfall on the bottom left and also Grandmasters in the bottom right. And we're going to break this apart because it's going to be a lot easier to explain this way. So if you go onto the Nightfall, you can see that there are an array of difficulties that you can choose from. Starting off with Hero being the easiest, this actually has matchmaking on. So you can do this solo and you will pretty much have a team with you at all times. But when you go up to Legend and Master, it is not the case because matchmaking gets turned off. So you will need a dedicated fire team to run this. But unless you're feeling really brave, then you can try and tackle it solo. But for the Legend modifiers, there is a maximum effective light of 1815. The actual actual cap for this season is 1810 which means five power levels from your artifact will be carried over along with you to bring you up to 1815 but then you are capped from there on as you can probably tell from the yellow text in front of you as well the recommended power is 1830 which means all the enemies you'll be fighting are of 1830 power level so it means you're going to be 15 levels under every single enemy that you fight which is where the challenge comes into this there are obviously more modifiers that come into this like shield of foes equipment locks champions there is also normally some kind of threat along with two miscellaneous kind of modifiers i like to call them so scorched dirt which means enemies throw grenades more often it's quite fun but then there's also the surges and the overcharges which you should pay attention to as well because this will help you out massively dealing with the nightfalls and of course when you look at hero the power level is different because it's 1770 but you will be capped at 1765 so there's only a five power level difference honestly you won't really notice this much but you will notice that the enemies are slightly tougher than normal finally you have the master difficulty which is 1820 level and it is 1840 enemies so there's a difference of 20. so you can imagine that master is going to be very difficult but then there is one step higher than that there is also the grandmaster nightfall and the grandmaster nightfall is pretty much like the master nightfall except there is a difference you're capped at 1815 instead and the power level for the enemies is actually 1840, so 25 levels of difference. And trust me, Grandmaster modifiers are no joke, because there is something called Extinguish. And what Extinguish does, if your entire fire team falls in a lightless area, so when an icon shows up on your screen and like darkness comes from the corners, you'll know that you can't actually revive yourself in these areas, and your fire team has to revive you instead. But the thing is, if all of you fall in one of these areas when Extinguish is active, then you are kicked back to orbit and have to restart it all over from the start. And not only that, there is normally double the champions compared to what is in Master, so be prepared for that. But in case you manage to get the fire team together and manage to break through all the Grandmaster Knight Falls, which is normally six per season, you will actually get a snazzy little seal called Conqueror. And this is the first of many endgame seals that are available. So total contest is pretty much just beat six different Grandmaster Nightfall Strikes. Very simple to do if you actually have the team to do it. Defeat champions and Nightfall Strikes, that doesn't actually apply to just Grandmasters. That can be anything. Play a Grandmaster Nightfall Strike with each subclass. So you have to use each one. Strand isn't on there, but I imagine it'll be added at some point. And achieve a high score in a Nightfall Strike, which I'm going to be honest, a lot of the Nightfall Strikes, you can get over 150k quite easily, especially on Legend. So that's not exactly a difficult to get but if you wanted to guild the triumph which resets every single season you need to complete the six active nightfalls for that season so this season is glassway arms dealer lakes shadows hypernet proving grounds and highest battlegrounds mars which some of them are easy to do and some of them aren't exactly difficult but as you can see from the gilding i am not too interested in gilding conqueror let's turn the attention to another side of the game which is the pvp aspect of it so you probably got familiar now with a lot of the different game modes that are presented in the crucible but there is one game mode that comes on every or so often on the weekends, which isn't active at the minute because as of recording this video, it's not actually active. But that's called Trials of Osiris, and Trials of Osiris is pretty much the pinnacle of Destiny PvP. That's because you can get specific loot within it that you can't get anywhere else in the game, which is the Osiris sets. Which besides the legs on the Hunter at the minute, this is one of the sets and what it looks like without any shaders on. So you kind of get an idea that it's all Egyptian themed armor. So if that's your kind of thing, then... By all means, go for it. But be warned, it is very hard to do. And you're pretty much just going to want to go for wins to start with. You don't want to go flawless, which is what I'm going to talk about now. So going flawless sounds quite simple to do. You actually just need to win seven matches back to back, which doesn't sound too hard if you get the right fire team and you get good matches to go along with it. But the problem is those two very rarely happen in this playlist. That's because new players aren't really interested in doing this. And like I said, this is the end game. So you're more than likely going to meet up with players that pretty much do this every single weekend, if not play Crucible religiously. But you can also get a seal for this known as Flawless, which, surprise, surprise, earning the Flawless seal the first time around doesn't seem that difficult to do, but you need to be good at PvP to do it, which is why I don't have any of these completed. 
but you need to complete a flawless passage of confidence basically get seven wins on a passage of confidence a passage of confidence basically means if you go flawless with it you get additional rewards when you get to the lighthouse but understandably if you lose even once then your passage is flawed and you must start over the next one is safe harbor so when you've been to the lighthouse at least once you have to assist another player in reaching the lighthouse for the first time ever which means yes you're gonna have to carry a newbie through but this might not be a bad thing if you go flawless on a solo ranking and then help your friends through later it's guardian of the lighthouse which means you have to win matches on a ticket after reaching seven wins during the current season so basically get flawless on your ticket and then continue to win after that the next one is probably the hardest one because you have to go flawless on six different maps so the maps rotate every week and in order to get this done you basically have to go flawless week after week unless you spread it out which you can do for the seal and finally you just need to earn wins and trials with different passages which is fairly straightforward to do so by all means have at it obviously this seal can be gilded but i've never unlocked it myself so i can't see the gildings but i do believe it's something along the lines of you have to go flawless pretty much every single season and do a couple extra bits as well and finally let's talk about my favorite activities in this game known as raids or dungeons so if you go over to the legends tab there is actually a couple here that you can see straight off the bat we have the bottle glass raid which was pretty much brought back from destiny 1 and this is probably the easiest raid to do in my opinion anyway but what you're going to need is a fire team of six people and to do that i would highly recommend that you use an lfg there is a destiny lfg that you can join which is just general for destiny 2 but there's also a website called 100.io which is where i found my clan and you can basically sign up there and pretty much join a bunch of like-minded people who like to play destiny and join them with doing raids and dungeon runs as well which i would highly recommend that you do the raids in a nutshell are probably my favorite activities just in general because the amount of fun you can have in these if you get a good team together is always going to be a good laugh and if you get the practice down for the raids good enough and you all know what to do you can easily bash out a raid in 40 minutes if not 50. obviously your first runs of this raid might take much longer because you're still getting used to all the mechanics you can only learn so much from a video of someone else doing it that you won't actually know how to do it until you do it yourself but in the event that you can't actually get a fire team of six together then there are also dungeons which prophecy dungeon is in the legends tab but there are other dungeons scattered around if you don't want to try this one this only requires a fire team of three but you can also try this solo if you want and the reason i say that is because every dungeon can be beaten solo and there is also triumphs for doing this so there's literally the prophecy that i just spoke of if you beat it solo you complete a triumph but if you actually get so good at it that you manage to beat it solo and without dying then you will unlock the solo flawless triumph and this actually comes with emblems so if i just go over to grasp of average quickly there is this pirate ship one because I haven't done this yet, but you get the gist of that. So if I go over to Spiral the Watcher as well, there is the Untarnished Grit, which gives you another emblem as well. So by all means, if you want to try these solo, go for it. But it will take a lot of practice for you to get your solo flawless completion. And it's worth saying again that these are end game activities. So don't expect to clear them on the first time unless you're willing to sink a lot of time into it. But when you actually get it down and get a solid team to run these with, they can be the most fun activities in the entire game in my eyes. And without it, I definitely wouldn't have been playing Destiny 2 as long as I have been. So take that from me. But that's going to be it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you liked it, leave a like down below as well as a comment telling me what you think of it. But I will be back next week with another part of the newbie guide. But for now, I shall see you all in the next video.